Ladies and gentlemen, we have the great pleasure of having Qasim Al Abri, who's also my countryman from Oman. So uh, Qasim Al Abri has been uh, a previous minimally invasive cardiac surgery fellow, and he kind of paved the way for me to come and join the program and take over. So they've been calling me Qasim 2.0, and I really feel like nobody is Qasim at all. Uh, but I have to fill big shoes. So re- really, really happy to have you here, Qasim. So for the people who don't know, where is Oman? Well, uh, thank you, Zia, for uh, hmm. for uh, having us, and it's always uh, good to be back in Houston again. Yeah. A lot of friends and a lot of uh, of colleagues, and here, uh, you know, we had some good memories. Absolutely. So, as you know, I you know Oman is uh, this is a great country. It's in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's a beautiful country. It is. I did my medical school there. All my education were there. I did medical school. And then I went to Canada to McGill to do my cardiac surgery training program yep. before I moved down to Houston. Yeah, and for and the audience that doesn't know, Kasim and I were also in in Montreal together. Yes, yes. <laughs> Kasim used to bully me a little bit, didn't you? Yeah. So yeah, I'm back to I'm back home since uh, 2022. Yeah, and I've been working at the National Heart Center in Muscat. Yeah. And uh, it has been a good two, two years there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, how did you feel the transition was uh, from being a fellow, essentially, you know, having somebody who has backup, uh, you know, and then going back to Oman where you potentially have no backup and you start all over again? How is that experience like? Well, so, I mean, it wasn't an easy transition. Uh Going there, it's a different setup. It's a different resources, different mm-hmm. uh, patient demographic, pa- yeah. dif- uh, different um, complexity. Mm-hmm. But uh, moving from a good training program up there in Canada, coming here, uh, the last few months of my fellowship was preparation for that transition. Yeah. So I was made somehow independent and responsible for all the mm-hmm. the things that I did here. Yeah. And. Um, we have anticipated the difficulty during that transition. Yeah. And we started somehow simulating them here. Yes. Yeah. So going there is, um, it was, it was a good transition. It was not that bad. Uh, I got a great team there. Mm-hmm. I was uh, very well uh, welcomed mm-hmm. and uh, I got uh, great uh, support from the institution, from uh, the other cardiac surgeons there. And uh, things start slowing uh, Start moving slowly but steady in the right directions. Yeah. And over a short period of time, I found myself fully immersed into the system and things were okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, from what uh, all the nurses and the other doctors tell me, towards the end of your fellowship, you were basically essentially doing all the cases by yourself. So uh, it was a great uh, segue into independent practice. So congratulations to you. And for the people who don't know, uh, Kasim, even though he doesn't like uh, people to know, but he is a pioneer of minimally invasive cardiac surgery in Oman and in the Middle East. And he, I wouldn't say single-handedly, but obviously it's all about teamwork. But uh, he was the, the main visionary behind the minimally invasive uh, program in uh, in Oman and congratulations to you. And now it's actually one of the biggest programs in the Middle East. And uh, you have wait lists of hundreds by by, and they're coming in waves. So congratulations to you. How did you find um, getting a team together? How easy was to try to convince people who don't know what minimally invasive is and uh, convincing uh, the cardiologists, the community? As you know, uh, in Oman, there's still... Uh, I wouldn't say a lack of trust, but like there's not enough traction in cardiac because it still feel like cardiac surgery is such a, you know, like uh, if somebody has heart surgery, it's they're just one foot in the grave, you know. So how do you convince the uh, the population that this is a safe thing to do? And uh, how did you get a team together? Well, that was not a, a big of a challenge, to be honest with you, you know. I was very lucky to have a very passionate team. Mm-hmm. They are always striving for innovation, for advancement, and for new technologies. So the moment I landed there, I was expected to bring something new with me. Good. And uh, we proposed minimal invasive cardiac surgery. And uh, I couldn't imagine or I couldn't expect of a better support than the one I got. Mm-hmm. Um 
the colleagues, the administration were very supportive. All the administrative and, you know, the nursing and the other supporting services were very passionate and they were more excited than me. And I, we, as we talked today in the conference, we have, uh, we have done it in a very systematic way. We have done it by the book and we have uh, prepared for it in a, in a very staged manner. Mm-hmm. We have got everything written on papers mm-hmm. and we have made a scheme mm-hmm. of the plan. And we have uh, started uh, getting the setup and the training simultaneously. So by the time we got, we got ready to do minimal invasive cardiac surgery in Oman, the team was, was really ready and they have full idea about what we, are, we were going to do. Regarding the population and the patients, you know, the, the patients nowadays are very smart. Yeah. And uh, they know very well what they are signing up for. And, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of knowledge that are available online these days open the doors for the patient to know the options. Mm-hmm. So even before we start doing card- minimal invasive cardiac surgery, they were asking about it. And some of them were traveling abroad, actually, to get it. So it wasn't very difficult to convince them. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a new technology and, um, you know, a new way of doing cardiac surgery. It's done for the first time, mm-hmm. but they were smart enough to know that these new surgeries and this new operation are done somewhere else and they have done it somewhere else. And they know that it will be done in a very uh, methodological way, I would say. And, uh, and in a safe way. And in a very safe way. Mm-hmm. And we have aligned all the preparations uh, along with the team here at Houston Methodist. And uh, we just basically copied the setup over there. Mm -hmm. And then when we did it, uh, we invited uh, Dr. Ramshan Danny, who's experienced in this field. And uh, I trained with him. So he came over there and we have done the first 10 patients together. Yes. And since the since then, the program is up and running. Amazing. And it's uh, it's doing very well. Yeah. Yeah. How does it uh uh, feel like uh, you're in a position to start training people because I heard that you have another surgeon who's there yeah. right now uh, who you're actively training to do minimally invasive cardiac surgery independently and you have first assistants who can do part of the procedure. Yes. Uh, how, do you, how do you find that uh, transition of being a surgeon to now being a trainer as well? Because you have a responsibility to the people around you. You want to make sure that they're motivated yeah. You know, so how do you keep them motivated and how do you train? How does it feel to be on the left side of the patient? Well, so that's, that's, that's one of the, you know, one of the milestone in running in bringing this program up. Mm-hmm. You know, once you get out of your comfort zone, mm-hmm. you have to do something new. Yes. Either you have to uh, bring a new technology or you have to do more complex surgeries. Yes. And in addition to this, you have to bring up lift up the team with you. Indeed. We, the way we structured the minimum invasive cardiac surgery program in Oman was very standardized. The team knew exactly or became very familiar. The, the team or the team members, the assistants and the nurses, they were um, very comfortable with the surgeries. And that by itself prepared them to take the next role. Wow. So... Actually, now we have three surgeons in the center who can uh, start doing minimal invasive cardiac surgery. And uh, the other team member, the anesthesiologist, we have the full team now that can perform, you know, uh, exactly the same. And uh, they provide the standard of care for the patients. The perfusionists, the nurses are, most of them are equipped and uh, they are very well trained to provide the standard that we aligned at the beginning. Regarding the surgeons, I mean, um, uh, my colleague who joined me, he actually he was actually trained to do minimal invasive cardiac surgery, and he opted himself to adopt the same setup to make it easier for the team mm-hmm. and uh, to make it easier for the team and uh, just create a sort of a team approach uh, with the amount of resources that we have. Yeah. So it wasn't difficult to train someone and. Uh, as I mentioned today in the conference, we have started to take this program um, a step forward by hosting mm-hmm. team from other hospital to come and observe. Wow. 
So we have visiting surgeons from uh, a visiting surgeon who spent uh, now with us two two months watching minimal invasive cardiac surgery. He's mm-hmm. from Egypt, mm-hmm. and uh, we got uh, two teams from Iraq who come and they want to, to watch our team. Mm-hmm. And there is a team from the United Arab Emirates coming. Mm-hmm. And um, the next step after they come and observe our surgery, we're gonna go there and uh, help them wow. setting up their minimal invasive uh, cardiac surgery program. Mm-hmm. This is all for the, we're doing all of this to uh, provide a better standard of care for our patients. Absolutely. I think the patient deserve better. Cardiac surgery is moving forward. Mm-hmm. And, uh, this is how we should look at it. Absolutely. Cardiac surgery is such a high stakes field. Uh, I mean, I hate to say this, but there's nothing like it because not just it, it, it being high stakes, but also you're you know, running against the clock because every single minute of ischemia time has worse and worse outcomes. So for it being so high stakes, how do you stay grounded and uh, focused? What are your cues to stay focused in these situations? Well, I, I think um, if you have a strong foundation, strong basics, and, uh, and if you do the things by the book, yeah, you look at the patient very well and uh, you do a thorough investigation, proper assessment, and uh, good communication with the patient and you set the expectation for the patient for the team and for yourself mm-hmm. that's the main state to to have a good outcomes yes and uh you make sure you have the the uh, the uh, setup that you want to execute the task yeah very well now i mean the technologies are very good the imaging in cardiac surgery is uh, different than before if you, I mean, you go to the operating room and you know exactly what you're going to do. Exactly. And you know what to expect in there before you go ahead. Indeed. So that's what helps. And uh, being meticulous, doing things by the book in the operating room uh, and uh, good care after the surgery, you know, it's 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 fundamental. We have uh, established an, a great intensive care unit. And we have a good perioperative team that take care of the patient from the moment they arrive at the hospital mm-hmm. to the day they leave the hospital and even afterward. Yes. So all of these, you know, infrastructures and all of these, uh, I would say, adjuvants to uh, to execute the task are really important. Absolutely. Yeah. And teamwork plays such a critical part in what we do because it's never been a one-man show. You can be the best surgeon in the world you know, but if the team around you does not have any trust in you, you know, it won't work. So how do you get your team members to be on the same wavelength or the same page as you? Do you pick and choose your team members or do you train them or how do you choose your team? Well, I mean, as I told you at the beginning of this conversation, I was very lucky to have an excellent team. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, most of the team members that I work with are either uh, colleagues or... uh, you know, friends that we have studied together, we have yeah. done trainings together. Indeed. And we are from the same social background. Mm-hmm. So it was very easy. They were striving for someone to do change and I was striving for someone to help me and support me. Mm-hmm. So all the colleagues and friends that I work with are actually in line. We have the same vision. Perfect. And uh, we talk every day mm-hmm. and uh, we align our uh, we align our objectives together. Yeah. We have just uh, started... Uh, a service line where we involve all the team members together. We have look at the, uh, you know, we evaluate the resources that we have. We look at the waiting uh, list of the patient. Then we look at our performance and, uh, you know, we reevaluate the, our outcomes and we change accordingly. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, we're very lucky. The team that we have are, is, is uh, I mean, it contains a, uh, a very skilled and very well trained uh, individuals yeah starting from the cardiology departments going to anesthesia perfusion nursing staff and all the other uh, supporting service and most imbo- more importantly they are very professional yes very professional very committed and they do what they like i mean they are enjoying their work mm-hmm. they don't come because they have to yeah they come because they want to yeah and uh, what I like about that setup, you can call anyone from the team member at any time. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether they are on call or not. Yeah. They will just come and give you the support that you want. Wow. So speaking of evolution, you've evolved the practice at Oman so much. 
Now, going back to re-evolution, how important is a summit like this for somebody who is willing to start minimally invasive cardiac surgery? Like, how important yeah. do you think that is? No, I, I do think this this forum, the Revolution Summit, is the most maybe, in my opinion, the most prestigious minimally invasive, uh, you know, uh, meeting. It has uh, started years ago, and uh, it uh, invites uh, like a world renowned faculty to do it, and it always brings the newest technology. And the setup here at Houston Methodist and the Mighty is exceptional. I have never seen something like this. Indeed. Yes, and uh, you know it it cover all aspect of minimal invasive cardiac surgery, and it doesn't only cover the theoretic the theoretical part. I think the hands on or the ultimate hands on, as we used to call it, mm-hmm. is is what make a difference here. I was just in the lab this morning to make sure the stations are very well organized and yep. aligned, and I could see the setup. I mean, it's it's a state of art. Yeah, and there is a good opportunity for everyone to practice and good opportunity for everyone to learn. Mm-hmm. And from uh, from whom? From a uh, word pronounced faculty. I mean, yeah. it's, it's this is amazing. Absolutely, yes. uh, you couldn't ask for anything better. Yes. To be honest, and uh, we did not only cover the surgical part, as you could see this morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are covering also on how to start, how to set up a minimal invasive cardiac surgery mm-hmm. programs. Yeah, yeah, that's outstanding. Gassim, I'm so happy to have you here. Honestly, you're such an inspiration for many, uh, not just here, but inspiration for many in the Middle East and especially in Oman. And I'm, we're lucky to have you here. And I'm lucky that I'm going to be working with you in a year. Uh, looking forward to that. And hopefully we can do great things together. Thanks Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate you. <laughs>